Hi, my name is Matt James, and I'm going to show you in this video tutorial how to create a 3D stroke effect like you see here on the left side of this phone. The 3D stroke effect can be achieved by using the pen tool and then right clicking and stroking. This can be tough for beginner users, so I'm going to show you how to do that in maybe 10 steps or less. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm just going to minimize this uh, final, layer, final preview right there. I'm going to go to File and I'm going to click New. As you can see, the hotkey for it is Apple N on a Mac or Command N on a PC. Click New. Up, becomes, up comes our new document window. I'm going to go ahead, uh, put the width as 300 and the height as 800 and keep the resolution the same and click OK. Now there you have it. Up comes our new canvas that we're ready to paint just like good old Bob Ross. Now as you can see, this is our layers palette over here. Here's, and you can tell that because it says layers. Hey, go figure. Now, what we're gonna do is make a new layer. To do that, you can click the new layer button down in the bottom right of this layer palette, or you can go to layer, new, layer. As you can see, there's a hotkey for that as well, but just to make it easier on you all, I'll just go ahead and click layer. There we go. Now, I'm going to call this layer stroke. There you have it. Click enter or click OK. Now, up pops our new layer above our background layer, you can see. Every new document you start will have a background layer. This is the new layer we added. As you can see, there's gray and white squares in the canvas. That is showing us that there is nothing on the layer or it's transparent. There's nothing going on there. So with that said, I'm going to click on the background layer, there you go, and I'm going to select the Marquee Tool. The Marquee Tool is located to the left of the Move Tool, or in the very top left of your Tools Palette. I'm going to go ahead and click Rectangular Marquee Tool. Now I'm going to draw out a nice little selection like so. As you can see, we have our dancing ants going around. Why they call it this, I have no clue. I guess the guys were just getting bored and wanted to... Uh, make a joke or something, but there you go. There's that now you can fill a selection in a variety of different ways um, I'm going to show you those now You can come to your paint bucket tool and you can click paint bucket and then all you can do is click right in there and there you have it or Let's uh, undo that you can go to edit fill dot 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 and use foreground color. You can select from a variety of different choices, but we'll just do foreground color. There you go. I'm going to undo that. Or you can do what is called um, the keyboard shortcut for that. To, the keyboard shortcut to fill the selection with the foreground color is Alt Delete or Option Delete on the Mac. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And there you have it. This filled the foreground, or this filled the selection with the foreground color. Now, I know you all are thinking, well, Matt, can I fill the selection with the background color? And I will say, yes, you can. To do that, you will hold Command and press Delete on a PC, or hold the Apple key and press Delete on a Mac. And there you go. There's our nice red um, line there. So we're just going to go ahead and go back to the black. To do that, just do Alt Delete. There you go. Now I'm going to deselect this uh, selection. To do that, you're going to click Command D on a PC or Apple D on a Mac. And there you have it a nice black vertical line. Now I'm going to repeat that process about three times to achieve a nice stroke look. I select my marquee tool. I'm going to drag it out. I'm going to do a nice thin one. I'm going to do Alt Delete and fill the selection. Now so I can see that, I'm going to click Command D or Apple D on a, on a Mac. There you go. And with that said, I'm just going to fly through this so I'm not wasting everyone's time. I'll delete. I'm going to do Apple Delete or Command Delete. And uh, one more. It's going to be a very small one. There you go. Now we got these vertical lines going across our document. Now, I'm going to go ahead and center those. To do that, you can click your Move tool or press a V, and you can actually click and position them right in the center of your document. Now, 
we're going to make give the lines a 3D look. To do that, go to Edit, Transform, and Warp. Now the Warp tool basically uses the image as a piece of paper. And I've read a lot of different ways on how it works, but this is the easiest way for me to explain it. Imagine that each of these anchor points is on the corner of a paper. So if I grab the top right corner and pull it to the left, it's going to start flipping the paper over. And I'm going to pull the top left one and go that way. Now you can see we're starting to get a nice look. I'm going to go ahead and repeat it. Take the top left, go to the right, and I'm going to take the, uh, excuse me, the bottom right, <laughs> and go to the left, and then I'm going to grab this bottom left one and go to the right like this. Now, you're seeing now, I'm, sh I'm sure you're like, Matt, it's not looking too good. Well, this is where the next step comes, and this is really where the creativity happens. Go ahead and click on the control arm for those anchor points and you can see it starts giving our lines a fatter look or a more 3D look so I'm gonna go ahead pull these out and you can do whatever you want to achieve the look that you'd like but I'm just gonna do this and once you get it where you want it you're gonna click the check mark up here or press enter I'm gonna go ahead and hit the commit transform and there you have it. now we have a basic straight line going up and down with this nice curve to it, this 3D look. Now to make it just really pop and look really sharp like it's going through space, we're going to go to so, um, Filter, Distort, Shear, right here. Now this is the cool part. Shear works on a vertical axis and you can put a curve on the vertical axis. To do that, you click on the line and there you see a little control point. Now I'm dragging it out to the left and you can see in our preview that it's actually warping the line to match this line in the shear window. So I'm going to do a small little S curve like this. And I like that there. And you can see we got this beautiful curving stroke. Press enter and there you have it. An easy stroke effect in no time at all. I hope this helps and be looking for more of my video tutorials.